Hello all and welcome back to the cockpit of the 777. Today it's going to be a systems description kind of video. I'm going to be talking about the communication system of the aircraft. And I decided to record this video because there is a lot of confusion regarding communications, at least for flight simulator pilots. And this is not, not unsurprising really because most or many um, computer pilots, they fly alone. They don't even have a, a first officer on the right here, not even a stewardess to go ask for some coffee, I'm just joking. But um, the bottom line is that many people um, fly alone and they don't really care about communications. Another thing is that you might be flying online on IVAO or VATSIM and use their your respective clients and uh, hence you don't really um, understand the system. Now I've been doing some research, uh, I've even been asking some real pilots about the system. I'm not a real pilot myself so I might make some, some mistakes in my descriptions, I hope everything is uh, making sense though. And uh, I've been using the FCOM as a reference on the uh, chapters regarding uh, aircraft uh, descript system descriptions, uh, chapter on communications. Also. I've been using the PMDG introduction manual, which I recommend you read. And um, after gathering all that information, I decided to, to do a little video insight into the system for those people who are not really familiar with it or who might want to, to learn something new that maybe they don't know. Um, I hope you like this video and um, let's get down into it. Okay, so here we are down at the aft AL stand. You notice I have my IBAP, my client, online client uh, window open here. Don't worry, nope. there's nothing underneath it, so it's not blocking the view or anything. I'm intending to to use it later on to explain how the online flying integrates within the PMDG 777. Um, also, I want you to get a configuration issue out of the way first. So if you go to the FMC to PMDG options, simulation, and then to the seventh page there is an option called ACP controlling FSX. Now this option is important because what it does is it's telling FSX which ACP, I'm, I'm going to be talking about the ACP in more detail, uh, which ACP is controlling the audio system of FSX. Now in a let's say for most of the people flying uh, on FSX on the PMD 777 I believe most of the people use it uh, on a conventional computer not on a home built cockpit and it's uh, the chances are high that you only have one sound system and you're not flying with two mics or you're not flying with another pilot or anything like that um, so my recommendation is you leave it at the default value of captain only that way you are going to be controlling your audio panel through this left ACP. Um, now there is another option which is FO only. If you like to fly as an FO, by all means select FO. And uh, either captain or FO, uh, use this only if you know what you are doing because you could be messing up with the sound configuration of FSX. So captain only and uh, you will understand what I mean later on. So now a basic system description. I think the, the first thing you have to understand when dealing with communications is the independency of the different systems. So I would say there's, uh, to, in order to understand this roughly, there's three independent systems. Uh, on one side there's the radios themselves. Then you have what are called the radio tuning panels which are, well, well, you see the numbers, the digits, the frequencies, and the frequency selector knobs, ra rotating knobs. Those are your RTP, radio tuning panels. And then there is the audio control panels, ACPs. There's one for each pilot, another one for, for the observer. So all of those are independent, meaning you can control any radio from any radio tuning panel and also you can uh, use any ACP to listen or transmit through any radio 
that's something important. Now, each pilot has his own RTP and his own ACP, so the captain uh, will be um, responsible for his own radio tuning panel and for his own ACP audio control panel. The FO, the same, he will be responsible for the right RTP, right ACP, and the observer, or if applicable, any of the other two pilots. Um, as, uh, as by the standard SOP or by convention will be in charge of the center uh, radio tuning panel and center ACP. Now, this does not mean that the captain is in command of the left radio because they are independent or that the uh, FO is in command of the right radio. Um, in fact, with any radio tuning panel you can be controlling any radio. You see here we have the VHF left but we could also easily select the VHF right. And I'm going to be talking about that in a moment. But for now the important thing is there's the radios, there's the radio tuning panels and there's the audio control panels. So the first thing I'm going to be talking about is the radios themselves. There are three radios or VHF left, VHF center and VHF right. Uh, they are antennas allocated at different positions throughout the fuselage and that's because you'd want to have them not all in the same spot. Imagine you hit a bird or something and uh, all three antennas are uh, together and you lose them all at once. Well it wouldn't be cool to lose all of your communications because of one bird strike. So and the, the general tonic in aviation is to have redundancy and, but also to have meaningful redundancy. Um, it's not meaningful redundancy if all three antennas are at the same place, of course. Um, now, each of the radios is used for one purpose. Typically, the left VHF radio, the antenna is located on the top of the fuselage. It has better reception. The left VHF radio is used for communications. Um, the right VHF radio is usually used for emergency frequency, for monitoring the emergency frequency 121.5, for uh, monitoring the 80s information, VOLMET, for company frequency, for any other auxiliary frequency, while you still want to have your active uh, communication uh, frequency set on the left VHF. And the center radio, the center VHF, it depends on the aircraft. Some aircraft don't have a center radio. Uh, many commercial aircraft do have it, and uh, it's used for ACARS for data transmission. As you see here, it's configured for data transmission. So that's about the three radios themselves, um, which are um, not really or don't have to be linked to their respective radio tuning panels. They usually are, but I will explain now in a moment when talking about these panels, how you can use uh, different radios through different radio tuning panels. So the radio tuning panels themselves are here, one, two, and three, roughly corresponding to left, right, and center. And that's because usually through the left radio tuning panel, you control the left VHF radio, and so on. Through the right radio tuning panel, you control the right VHF radio. Now, what can you do with the radio tuning panel? Yeah, I think it's uh, pretty much self-explanatory. Pretty much everybody understands that with this rotating knob, you select the standby frequency, not to mess up your active frequency. You have your transfer switch to flip them from side to side. Now, in this case, I have the tower frequency 118.7. That's a typical tower frequency uh, because we are on the runway. And then our next frequency is 124.8. That's the departure frequency. Typically, pilots will input their next frequency into the standby window once they switch frequencies to be prepared. Um, here you have the radio selector. So with these six knobs, you select the radio you want to be controlling with the tuning panel. Now, as I said, typically with the left one, you control the left radio, but there might be instances where you don't want to do it that way. For instance, one that comes to my mind is imagine that the captain is uh, flying the aircraft, he's the pilot flying, 
and the first officer is the pilot monitoring. So the pilot monitoring is in charge of the radios and if a frequency change has to be done, well maybe the pilot monitoring the first officer is more comfortable managing the frequencies through this right radio tuning panel even though he wants to change the communication frequency which is uh, typically assigned to the left VHF. So how would how could he do it? He could extend his arm of course and change the frequency on the captain's radio tuning panel but he could also momentarily select his radio tuning panel to VHF left. There you see now they are both linked together the yellow light is on meaning that both are slaved together and any change that the FO inputs to the frequency through his radio tuning panel will be reflected on the left radio tuning panel as well. So say, for instance, uh, we are flying and we have to change to frequency 125.6. So let me go to the fr how it was at first. We're flying, the, the captain is flying, the pilot monitoring has to change the frequency and he has to change the active frequency to 125.6, for instance. So how could he do this? He could check he could select the left VHF radio, the communications radio, and now go and dial in the 125.6. There it is. Transfer it to the active frequency, and then switch back to the right VHF radio on his radio tuning panel. And it will return to the previous frequencies on the right tuning panel. You see 1215, it's still there, and 1220. Actually, you never lost it. The radio was always tuned to this frequency while um, the tuning panel was selecting the other radio. And you see, we've changed the frequency on the VHF left receiver through the right radio tuning panel. So that's one of the functionalities of the system. And that's how you show that the system is independent, really. You can control any radio through any radio tuning panel. Also, there's not only the VHF radius, you have the HF radius, but I won't go into detail on those because really because I don't know much about VHF radios. Um, I know they are used for oceanic communication, commun over water, um, and these radios, they mostly they have a lot of static to them, so people don't, don't like to use them. They have a background noise that is pretty annoying why you would be using the selective calling, but I won't get into detail on that. Another thing I didn't mention is you can turn these radio tuning panels off. I can't think of why you would want to do it, but well, you know that you can. That's an option to you. You can adjust the sensitivity of the HF radios here. It's usually defaulted to 75. And uh, maybe this has to do with the, well, yes, the sensitivity of the, of the radio receiver. And that's it about the radio tuning panels. Quite quite simple. If you, when you understand that each radio tuning panel uh, can uh, control any radio, any physical radio. So now let's move on to the audio control panels themselves. So there's three raid, um, audio control panels, ACPs, and each pilot is responsible for his own ACP. Now you see the ACP has a row of uh, black push push switches and through these switches you select the microphone that is which channel are, um, am I transmitting through am I putting out my message you can only select one channel at a time for a transmission you see if I move around my mic I'm selecting different channels to be transmitting through another thing that uh, is uh, worth mentioning is that once you select the mic, the mic into one channel the reception of that channel activates automatically even though you have the reception knob turned off. So in this case I'm transferring, I'm transmitting through the center VHF but the center VHF uh, receiver is turned off and still I'm going to be receiving. It's automatic. So these are the mic transmission switches and uh, the row underneath it, those are the, well, these control the volume and if you push them in or out you are tuning, turning the reception on and off. 
you cannot turn the reception off for the active mic channel but I can turn the reception off for for example the right VHF and also in the real aircraft you could adjust the volume by rotating this knob but I think it's not possible on the PMTG I, at least I cannot uh, do it myself I don't know if it's an option somewhere but I, I can't do it so um, unlike the microphone, the transmission buttons, you can select multiple reception channels. So you can be monitoring multiple uh, sources. For instance, in this case, this is a typical configuration. The um, captain is monitoring the left VHF radio because that's where his mic is plugged into. Of course, this makes perfect sense because you want to be listening to the to the channel you are talking through but also the pilot is listening to the right VHF radio which is 1 to 1 decimal 5 and this is typical it means the captain is monitoring the frequency set and the right VHF radio which is the emergency the guard frequency so at the same time I could also be monitoring for example the flight interphone to communicate with the ground crew I could also be monitoring the cabin or the PA system so as desired a typical configuration would be monitoring the right radio set to the emergency frequency so moving on here you have the MIG this is a transmission switch it's a spring loaded to neutral I can choose whether to transmission through my microphone or through my interphone and also have audio um, the audio control panel also controls the volume or um, reception of uh, nav, navate identifiers, for instance. So let's go to the let's call up the FMC. This is the FOS FMC. If I go to the nav rad page, you see I have ADF tunes 4210, and I also have VOR tunes. So I could listen to the VOR identifier, the left VOR there it is, there you hear it let's select the right VOR and you hear a different Morse code Okay, so there is two Morse codes associated with the VOR. There's a high pitch and a low pitch. One of them is the VOR itself, the other one is the DME. There it is. I'm, I don't know exactly which one is which, but I know that one corresponds to the VOR, and the other one corresponds to the DME, in case it's a VOR DME facility. Now you could also monitor an ADF, for example, 420.0 in this case. This. Now usually you don't really identify the radius through the Morse codes, it's not necessary because the navigation display automatically identifies them for you, but at least you know you could do it. This is the, uh, this is a filter, so right now it's in uh, both, you can filter voice or range, meaning you can filter if you want to listen to the, just the range identifier that's a Morse code or to the voice message. For instance, uh, I remember flying into Hong Kong Kai Tak, and if you fly the IGS approach, when you identify the IGS, there is a voice message telling you it's not an actual ILS. So if you put it to range, you would filter out this voice message. Let's try this out here, because, well, of course in, in FSX there's no voice messages, at least to my knowledge. But if, I, if this is set to R range, I hear the Morse code. If I set it to V voice, I, wo I won't hear it. So you see, you cannot hear the Morse code anymore because the filter is filtering it out. And if you move it back to both, you hear it. And the same goes for the ILSs, left, center, and right ILS. I have an ILS tuned. If I turn it on, I 
will hear it. And on the far right, you have the marker beacon, and this will uh, put out the the marker beacon, inboard marker beacon, uh, outboard marker. Uh, correction: the inner marker, the outer marker, or the intermediate marker as you fly above them. And this one, I did use it. Uh, I did find it useful sometimes during certain types of approaches, for example the Kitec IGS approach relies on the marker beacons and in that kind of approach I would use it to have an oral confirmation during final approach. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's pretty much it about the audio control panel. There's also a speaker here, meaning you can control the output through the speakers or through the headphones of the pilots. Also it's worth mentioning that the microphone you can select it on, you can push to talk uh, in four different locations. There's the this microphone switch here on the ACP. Let's move the camera. There is the microphone here on the glare shield, this microphone push button. There's another push to talk behind the trim switches on the jog. And finally you can be using your handheld microphone here, which also has a push to talk button. So moving back to the aft AL stand. So that's pretty much it about the ACPs. Um, now I'm going to show how I can listen to the 80s frequency. So for instance, Right now I'm tuning the right, I'm receiving the right radio on my left ACP. So if on the right VHF radio I select the 80s frequency, one to two decimal server, I should be able to hear it. Golf, Charlie, X-ray, Oscar, there airport there information, Delta, one, two, zero, zero, Zulu. So there you hear the 80s on the frequency. And that's because I'm monitoring it. If I turn it off, and I switch this frequency to the active frequency, I won't be able to hear it. Now somebody might think, but why am, am I not capable of hearing it if my on my right ACP I have the right VHF receiver turned on? And that's because what I said before, that FSX is only listening to the left ACP, so to speak. He's ignoring the right ACP. So for all FSX related issues, it's completely, it doesn't uh, make any difference for him how you configure this right ACP. You might want to configure it for completeness if you want, or for realism if you wish. I like to have it safe like that, I don't touch it much during flights, really. Now regarding the the center radio tuning panel, one thing I didn't mention is the data here. Select data, and this is for acres. If you happen to select yourself out of data, the only way back is to go through the maximum range. Here, let's see, there it is. And there you go back to data. I think only the center radio has capability. In fact, for instance, let's do it like this. You see, it's uh, radio tuning panel independent. It doesn't mean you can only select data on this radio tuning panel. But um, but you can select the right radio tuning panel to the center VHF radio and uh, select the acres there. So let's configure it back to how it's supposed to be. There it is. Now there's a switch here on the back of the AL stand which is used to um, slave the ACP panel of the observer to either the captain or the FO. So you see if I select it to FO the ACP of the observer is going to mimic whatever I do here. You see there it is, it's doing exactly the same. And if I select captain he will mimic the captain's Golf, side. Charlie, X-Ray, Oscar. I was listening to the 80s again. 
but it's usually left in normal, leaving liberty for the right ACP to be encouraged and the center ACP to be used. Now the last thing I want to talk about is how to use the radius on IVAO, for example, if you fly on EVAO. Well, I think I want you to notice that the frequency that's here on the active communications radio, VHF left, is the one displayed here on VHF1. The active frequency on the VHF2 radio is displayed here on VHF2. Of course, IVA dot the transmitter doesn't um, care about which your standby radio is, so check radio here won't have an effect. But if I change the active frequency, it will have an effect here on IVAO. So if you fly online, you can change the frequencies on the radio tuning panel perfectly fine. You don't have to open this client at all. The same goes for the transponders. If you see the transponder right now is on standby, because it's on standby on the plane as well. If I move it out of standby, it will go to on. Now it only has two positions on IVAO. It has several on the aircraft. Anything that's out of standby will turn your transponder on. There it is. The same for the squawk code. You can change it here, and it will have an effect here as well. So that's basically everything I want to about the communication system of the aircraft. I think I hope you found this video instructional and that you did clear up your understanding of the system. Any comments or questions you might ask them below. Thanks for watching.